Disorderly Podcast brought to you by the Launchpad Media. Go to www.thelaunchpadmedia.com, which doesn't work for my job, and it really frustrates me because I want to listen to all the great podcasts we have at work. Not that that would be too effective because my job is on the phone, so I have to like pause it every two minutes, and that gets annoying. Whatever. Uh, you can go there and listen to Johnny Rocket and uh, Alex Merced and probably a bunch of other people. Whatever. You know, we're there. That's all that matters. You, yeah, you're else? a stupid mask, Justin. Jeez. I'm just kidding. I love you, baby. It's mask envy. It is mask envy. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, find us on YouTube, Anchor. Look, our stuff's scrolling on the bottom now because I'm lazy and don't want to remember it. So, boom. There it is. Without further ado, we have Pat Ford. Aaron, I'm going to hey. let you take this away because... Cool. Man, I got it. Hey, Pat, I can just kind of see you from nose up <laughs> if you can adjust your camera. You kind of look like Wilson. I feel like we're watching Home Improvement. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay, awesome. So if you don't know Pat Ford, um, get to know Pat Ford. Pat, let's talk about uh, you have a really cool show. I'd like, we try really hard. Um, it's called Coalition Radio. Uh, our website is coalitionradio.us or facebook.com slash the Coalition Radio on the Mighty Mighty Twitter at coalition underscore radio. Um, we started out on AM radio about five or six years ago. We are, as we say, outrage porn free, civilly disobedient media. We spent about five years laboring in obscurity on AM radio. Um, then we decided to make the move to streaming, and we broadcast from a local digital uh, TV news operation in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, called Go Local Prov. You can see us on Facebook.com slash The Coalition Radio. We stream Friday night, 6 to 9. The point of the show is, I, I think, is a little different. We have, it's a, not purely a libertarian show. It's three hours, commercial free. Uh, we run largely three to four segments. The 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock hour, Eastern Time, is always the libertarian hour. We have libertarian guests um, from candidates to folks from the LP, uh, from the uh, LNC. We have libertarian activists on. Aaron, you've been on. Um, and it's no hold bars. I mean, it's video. We Skype people in. It's a lot of fun. You ask really hard questions. I, I We try to have a real conversation because conversation is lacking. Now, this show is great for conversation. But we're we're... Very much uh, wonk-driven. I'm fortunate, for whatever reason, uh, folks from Fee, from the Goldwater Group, uh, AIER, um, let's just say uh, FIRE, the Free Speech on Campus Group, the American Civil Liberties Union, they all are willing to supply people, you know, thought, you know, really subject matter experts. We had John Boucher a few weeks ago from, the, uh, from Goldwater, and he is a pioneer in something called educational savings accounts which is a way of taking the tax dollars assigned to your child, your student, and essentially giving it to you on a debit card to use uh, at the educational institution of your choice. And this is, this is actually happening in Arizona. Now, I'm an I'm a end theft education kind of guy, but we all know we can't turn public schools off overnight. This is a great way to start to migrate children from theft education into, uh, into private alternative forms of education that are under the parents' control, that are not biased, that are not, you know, uh, philosophically driven per se. It's a, it's a great first step. So we, we have a lot of guests like that on. Yeah, and yeah, these the, are so much better than vouchers, guys. I, yeah, I, you know. For a million reasons. Reason. Right. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer, a firm believer, that you've got to push from the very beginning your, 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 what your final goal is. I always say incrementalism is the devil. You know, here in, here in Rhode Island, we were one of the first states in the nation to have medical cannabis. Incredibly enough, we still don't have legal recreational. And the reason for that is, is because, well, once the uh, medical folks got their hooks in it, guess who our biggest opposition is to legalizing it for recreational? The people making the, uh, all the do re me off of the medical. Sure. So, you know, go big or go home on any of these issues. We need to drive right away for the liberty solution from the get-go. And those are the kind of issues we face. Now, I have commies, socialists. I have all sorts of people on my show. He's because the point is, Yeah, absolutely. The point is, is to have conversations with people. You know, I'm a big fan of Larry Sharp. 
We have all heard Larry's speech, and if you haven't, you really need to, about having conversations with people, not having to win the argument, per se. And I think of him all the time when I'm scheduling guests because I want to have people on from alternative perspectives, alternative viewpoints. We can't, as Liberty folks, sit in the bubble and just haplessly ignore what's going on in the outside world. We need to understand where other groups, other organizations, other philosophies are coming from. So that's, you know, that's the intent of the show. I I mean, this week, for example, I've got a woman named Jessie Sage coming on. She's a sex worker. We probably dedicated 40 or 50 hours to interviewing folks who are active in the decrim movement, sex work is real work movement, anti-FOSTA, anti-SESTA, folks who are actively engaged in sex work, but are also working with allies, and in many cases, they're philosoph- philosophers themselves, in, in, in working towards decrim. So I definitely um, you know, want to come back to sex work, but while we've got you on the show, mm-hmm. for those in the know, and if you're not one of those in the know, after this show, you will be, uh, recently, Jeff Lyons, the Region 8 alternate, alternate uh, resigned his position to take a, a job that's going to move him out of that region. Um, so that seat's open, and a little birdie told me that you <laughs> might possibly be considering running for that seat. And I want to know if there's any truth to that. And Raptor wants to know if there's any truth to that. Like, we are we're dying to know. Inquiry. No, there's- there, there is truth to it. I've, I've started having conversations with state chairs. Um, I'm a state chair uh, in the New England zone. Uh, it's um, Jeff is a, did, I think, a terrific job, and Jeff's a great guy. So yeah. he's staying in the liberty movement, which is great. He's find, finding a career in it, which is outstanding. So he'll be our ally for a long time. Um, so it's, it's a loss to have him on the short term. To have him move out of this position, I think it's a gain in the long term because I think he's going to be able to bring the libertarian's perspective to a lot of people. That being said, um, to, are we able to talk about what he's doing? Because I actually have no idea. Oh, he's going. To, he's going to work for YAL. Yeah, he took oh, a job okay. with YAL. Yeah. So, and by definition, when you go to work for these organizations, you don't get to be. Um, Mm-hmm. You know, right. you don't get to be right. Yeah. And like, no, no, that it wasn't the Libertarian Party saying you can't work for YAL and hold a position as a Libertarian. Oh, it, was, right. yeah, it, was, it was Yale yeah. saying if you're going to work for us, you can't hold this position. This is a conflict. Um, right. And we have we have locally we have a gentleman who, uh, who by definition, I can't name, who works for a, a think tank who whenever he sees pictures being taken out, he promptly places a paper bag over his head and cuts out the eyes so, so he can hang out with us and be photographed. Great guy. But the, the, the laws on this are pretty arcane and they're pretty tough. And so, you know, you've got C3, C4 issues. All sorts of campaign issues. So <clears throat> I think we've temporarily lost Jeff in this capacity. I think he's a, he's a long-term player. Um, yeah, I bring it that Yale didn't tell Jeff, you can't work for us and hold this position just to be malicious or spiteful. Um, no. They I, have it's, to it's, protect it's, it's, themselves from the feds. That's the truth. Right. It's the feds. <clears throat> there's, there's another great activist, Darcy Texera, who um, was with Massachusetts. <clears throat> excuse me. Massachusetts LP did a great job there. He uh, he went to work for YAL, YAL, and now he's uh, working for another think tank. So you have it, – it's it's great that we're, we're taking folks who are great activists and we're starting to worm our way into the swamp, as it were. And, you know, these are, these are committed libertarians and who are going to bring our message to new places. I, I think I bring a different potential skill set to it if, if folks want me to be involved at that level. Um, I think I'm much more of an activist, per se. Um, you know, I've, I'm, I, I often laugh. I consider myself just a, a regular street politician who uh, woke up to liberty. <clears throat> Excuse me. Time for a little refreshment. Yacht Club <laughs> Soda, the finest soda on the planet. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Tier Wine would like to have a word with you. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm drinking Berry, Berry Melons Rebellion, which is the Yacht Club Soda from Rhode Island. Named after the, the, by the way, the true revolution, the Revolutionary War, began not at some place in Massachusetts. It began with the burning of the Gatsby here in Rhode Island, years before the uh, 
for the for the posers in Massachusetts decided to get some balls. I would say so, that the revolution uh, started in 1749 when the Jacobite uprising <laughs> happened, and then all those crazy motherfuckers got sent to America <laughs> on a prison ship. That's when the revolution started. <laughs> yeah, in uh, reality, the revolution did not start even on our continent. I mean, I mean, let's get really honest. People came over here, like, and they were already fucking salty, right? And now look at us, accepting thirty five percent tax rates, like a bunch of bitches. Look, it's not just us. look at Australia. When when you when you exile people, just like for for future generations, when you exile huge groups of people, um, they get salty. <laughs> Who knew? Hey, and it's that's how my family came over. It's weird about Australia, too, because, like, those were the extra salty people, and now they're, like, bitches. Take our guns! <laughs> it's okay! <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a little embarrassing, to tell you the truth. How the hell... <laughs> Do people who live in a country on it, a country that is its own continent, okay, that is inhabited by the most deadly everything on the fucking planet? <laughs> How do you run scared from a fucking government? Also, you're descended from fucking madmen who took on <laughs> the world's strongest military in a fucking skirt. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Hey, I, and I saw a movie about it that was filmed in New Zealand. Hell, they got effing orcs down there, man. <clears throat> if you can fight orcs, <laughs> you know, Look, what's, like what's a revenue? Like, so I we cross-trained with Australians when I was in air assault school, right? And so we're standing on top of this building, and everybody's rigged up, and you're getting ready to repel down, and there's an Australian guy next to me. And he looks at me, and he says, you ready? And I'm like, yeah, as I'm backing up to the labs, I'm going to do this textbook. And dude, like Superman, dives off this fucking building, and he's hooting and hollering the whole way down, like it's the coolest shit ever. Like this shit is better than sex. Just flying down, like this is nothing. These are badass motherfuckers who let their government take their arms. I'm like, what the fuck? Listen, what it's happening here? You know, we we listen. We've got in Rhode Island. We passed the, the the Republican Party supported red flag legislation last year. Now you've got the specter of the Republican Party supporting even more onerous red flag legislation at the state. So so the and, and largely one of the rationalizations that's being used is it's to keep vets from hurting themselves. That's what literally people said that on the floor of the Rhode what Island Health and Center. From hurting themselves, stop fucking creating them. Uh, yeah, hello. So, first of all, how condescending and insulting is that to folks who are veterans? I, you know, just that somehow you're going to you, not you, but you, the the the, the liberal re- legislator, is going to save a United States veteran from harming themselves. I, I just words cannot even begin you to know, see how insulting this is. You have to kill people with ballpoint fucking pens. Taking guns away, see, it, it helps nothing. Did you guys see Especially the news when you're from California vets? today? Huh? Did you see the news from California today? Serial stabber stabbed uh, two injured, four dead uh, from knives, yeah. and they fought, they caught him. Look, it, you you trust vets to carry all kinds of weaponry and use it against other people. Uh, give me a break. I shot. Yeah. Well, I was trained to shoot missiles. Yeah. If I can't handle a gun after that, I don't know what the, I don't know who can. Well, what I find equally important and as offensive is the liberal liberal uh, elite in this nation's sudden obsession with the Constitution. Listen, I don't need a piece of paper to tell me what my rights are. Mm-hmm. It's nice that it's there, kind of helps things in terms of gumming up the court system, but my right to self defense is fundamental to my existence. It's a birthright. Look, I it's think there. that's something that, that non-libertarians don't understand. I think when, when I talk to non-libertarians and they say the Constitution grants our rights. No, dude. No. The Constitution is a piece of paper. It, it, right. it's, it's just this. Literally, it's a piece of fucking paper. It doesn't grant your rights. You were granted your rights the minute you started sucking air. Okay? 
that's when you got your rights. The Constitution is there to help us push back against tyrannical governments and remind them that we are well aware of what our fucking rights are. Number right. one. Number two, only people, individuals, have rights. You can't grant somebody a right that you yourself don't possess. But the left and the right are notorious for trying to grant government rights that are not rights. So Justin's on fire here. What they want to stop vets from harming is politicians. Right? <laughs> Do you know why? Maybe because somebody had this bright idea to make vets take an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the, of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. The, we have buildings. There's no end date on that oath. Terrorists in D.C. That is what Congress is. It is a building full of domestic terrorists. Right, and I, I was every now I, I get to testify um, in Rhode Island in front of a variety of uh, state of Rhode Island uh, panels, Senate, House, Judiciary committees, all the whole nine yards. Here's how I like to introduce myself when I'm there when I, when I testify then, because I think what we as libertarians need to do is every time you're given an opportunity to lay out to these people to reinforce your rights. So here's what I say. My name is Pat Ford, and I'm chairman of your Libertarian Party of Rhode Island. Haven't heard of us? You will. In 2016, over 15,000 Rhode Islanders, we're a small state, voted for Gary Johnson, our presidential candidate. I'm a free market capitalist. I believe that capitalism is the mechanism by which the individual can reach their full human potential. I voluntarily consent to be governed a consent that I would reserve the right to withdraw at any time. And then I go into my comments. Every single time I talk to these people, I remind them that I have temporarily assigned some level of power to them to act on my behalf and in my interests. That's it. And I reserve the right to walk away from that at any time. We need as libertarians to begin to reassert our rights in a very pu public polite, articulate, thoughtful manner. See, you, you know, it, 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 it's been lost. With that. You say that polite possible? and I struggle with that. Like, look, if I kick in your door mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm in a mask and I've got a baseball bat and I'm taking all your shit and I'm telling you to stand down or I'm going to beat the hell out of you with this baseball bat, are you going to be polite? Well, when I say polite, I mean in terms of when you're given the opportunity in public forums. As libertarians, we need to reassert ourselves in terms of testifying, in terms of shaping legislation, and, and, and also engaging in civil disobedience, peaceful civil disobedience, in opposing this legislation. Now, listen, I, I'm going to be blunt. This, this country was formed at the end of a gun. You know, the, 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 the Redcoats did not go gently into that good night. Nor, ultimately, will any government, any tyrannical government do so. We see it all around the world. First world nations now. Spain turned its guns on people who wanted to secede peacefully. Greece. That is, Venezuela, Greece. All of these are first world nations that have turned the guns of their domestic forces on the people of their country. These aren't some wild-ass dictatorships in some godforsaken part of the world. Mm -hmm. They're part of our world. It's happening more and more often. We need to reassert our rights. It's, you know, it, it's, it's just fundamental. Yeah, government and, and doesn't it, grant you rights, people. You grant government power. Exactly. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better. You know, one of the things I wanted to talk about tonight, I hope you'll humor me for a minute or two. Go for it. Libertarians need to, you know, the, the group that's on this call right now, you know, we're politely confrontational. We as a party need to stop apologizing or for our beliefs or mincing words in order to th think that we can appease people who will not follow us anyway. We need to get rid of this Republican light crap. We need to stop yeah. kowtowing to someone else's impressions or of, of what they consider to be liberty. We need to assert our statement of principles. And we need to assert our platform at every place possible. 
We should be proud of it. We're right on everything. And events are bearing it out. So we can't allow them to change the subject or, or temporarily co-opt that from us. Right. And that's going to be critical as far as 2020 goes, both on the local level, where I believe we need to be spending a lot of our efforts, and also on the national level. People who can thoughtfully articulate a clear libertarian vision. That's something we haven't had in the time that I've been involved with the National Party. And damn it, this is the time to do it. How much because of that, that's though, what will energize a base. How much of that, though, Pat, is because um, when you talk to... If Raptor and I pulled in into a room 200 libertarians, how many of them would agree on 90% of their own philosophies? So, well, first off, there would only be one real libertarian, and that's me. Right? Right. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying. So how much of this – yeah, it's easy for us to sit here and say we need to speak truth to messaging. Um, mm -hmm. We need to be true to our principle, and this is libertarianism. How many other – libertarians are going to say you guys are fucking crazy that is not libertarianism it is part of the problem that we don't have as a party and as a movement separately um a well-defined mission statement outside of the SOP but our our, our I'll play devil's advocate because I, I agree with you but ultimately our platform and we understand that people are going to disagree with individual parts of our platform our platform is unusually plain spoken and unusually blunt about the issues of the day. And the statement of principles amplifies that's, you know, it's in, in a large sense, you know, it's, it's the broader statement of our philosophy. You know, I, yeah, I understand. Like, I know somebody said something to Raptor once about, well, your platform changes every two years. So how we do you actually, say that the platform that changes every two years is a consistent philosophy? Because I, I – okay, no, I've only been with the movement since 2011, right? Not a long time in, in, the, in the big picture when I look at some of the folks, uh, you know, the Frank Robinsons of the world, for example. Um, Love you, Dad. <laughs> the – you know, so I, I don't have that institutional knowledge, but – Regardless of how some fee people feel about immigration, I think it's very well established that we essentially respect the nation's right to have borders, but we also s support and embrace the notion of the free exchange of people, ideas, and commerce. I don't think – I maybe, maybe we ha as a movement – I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm just spitballing. Maybe we as a movement have to be perhaps a little stricter – on what uh, defining what we believe, I, and I understand that's going to offend some people. You know, obviously the abortion issue is wildly, wildly discussed, but all the other hot button issues I think are relatively straightforward. You know, you know I, I I don't know how you could be a border terrier. I don't know I don't know how you could support a wall or strict enforcement of border laws, and at the same time again respect that core notion that people have the freedom of movement. Look, I've seen the Berlin Wall. I, I remember what that was. Mm -hmm. And, and the, they sold that under the guise of protection. Right? Like, I remember what that was. I have seen, there, there's a museum there. Um, and I have seen photos of soldiers pulling children through barbed wire to get them out. Mm -hmm. So everybody who thinks a wall is a great idea, I mean, that traps you in, dude. Like, yo, hello. Um, and, and we have more undocumented immigrants in this country from Canada and Asia than we do from Mexico. Just like FYI. I, I, I believe, you know, it's interesting. I, I recently heard a replay of one of Ronald Reagan's last speeches where incredibly enough, he pointed towards the strength that new immigrants brought to the nation, which was never in doubt until really the last 10 or 15 years. Immigrants have always been this, this kind of extra source of energy 
for American for the American economy, whether it be on the entry level labor end or in so many cases now, you know, the intellectual uh, strength that's brought to the nation because of the success of secondary education and, and, and colleges and research institutions in this nation. You know, well, the, 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 the moment we shut that off, you're absolutely right. We're, the, the, those people will go work somewhere. Those people who are trained as such will innovate somewhere else. It won't be here. We lose by losing those people yeah. on a very practical level. So why would we want to do that? I mean, Raptor, um, your clan hails from where? Lockheel. I, it, sorry, um, I did definitely zone out there. What? what? <laughs> your clan, where? Your your. What's your clan again? Cameron. So your where did the Camerons originate? Uh, so the northwestern edge of Scotland, uh, Lockheels in the Inverness area. And they're not one, but multiple Camerons actively working in the Libertarian Party, correct? Uh, I mean, my cousin is your uh, your rep, so she, she's. I mean, Whitney. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's the thing. Here's kind of a weird thing about Celts in the movement. So uh, if you're dealing with a Cameron, you can trust them. But anyone named Campbell, run. And I know I just <laughs> threw a bunch of people under the bus. I don't give a fuck. <coughs> we don't have a, a nation anymore because of you people. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, yeah. It, look. Can I? So I do want to jump in here because we were talking about borders and I didn't want to jump in while you were talking. But yeah. I think while I do not agree <laughs> with the arguments, I think there are valid arguments for kind of the libertarianism within the bounds of nationalism if please don't say the welfare state because that will just make me vomit what about it please don't say that the welfare state is a reason for secure for increased security at a border no so because that will just make me puke so the welfare state makes immigration <clears throat> like proper immigration impossible it's something, but there's a million things wrong with the welfare state that we need for us to want to dismantle it. It's not why we need border security. We, it's more to say we wouldn't need border security so much without the welfare state. But even then, um, and look, so I'm trying to articulate an argument I don't agree with, and, I, and I'm not on the top of my game right now, so it's a little difficult. But it, it kind of boils down to within our borders, these are the rules. And our rules are very liberal in the sense of what we understand as liberal, not what Americans understand as liberal. But outside of our borders, those are not our rules. So, you know, if you're coming from those areas, bringing their rules with you, because that is how people vote initially, uh, except for Cubans. For That's obvious like reason. I never come to your house because we have different rules in our homes. I mean, are you so serious I right now? I don't ever buy the uh, the argument of applying the don't logic. Don't ever convert if you're a, if you're Jewish. Don't convert to Christianity if you're if you're a non Christian. Don't convert, and if you're a Christian, stop trying to convert people because they're going to bring their rules. Hang on. So I will never put a lot of stock in an argument that equates borders and my yard. Because as much as I tear into the people who make that argument on the other side, well, do you lock your doors? Yes, because it's my property. Okay, I don't want to put the border That's argument. That's why if I come to your house, I'm still going to follow your rules. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, then there are going to be consequences for my actions, right? You're going to ask me to leave, whatever. The same holds true for non-nationals entering into the border that that is the United States. You don't have to have a secure border to hold someone accountable for breaking a rule once they are within your jurisdiction. So, yes, 
I would. So that's not really the argument. I'm not making this from a moral stance. I'm saying that a person can be a nationalist and say, I don't want a, a, a heavy flow of immigration. I want controlled light immigration because I'm dumb and I don't understand economies, whatever. Uh, and still be a libertarian in the sense of in this country, I want a minarchist state as far as the laws that govern the nation except for the border thing. So you're talking more like the the people that make the Ellis Island arguments? Right. But to a, to a certain extent, but also to f- someone who would because I make the Ellis Island argument. That's kind of what I want is you just come in, we make sure like we spend two days or so making sure you're not a wanted criminal in your home country and Technology makes that possible. We can figure that out pretty quick, and away you go. Uh, yeah, just you have, have somewhere to go. Work. You can't just come in here uh, with nowhere to go because we have enough homeless people. So, so like, have- you, you can't have tuberculosis. Right. You can't have just axe murdered a busload of nuns in Turkey. <laughs> and and here's the thing: like, we're talking about immigration, which is one of the most complex issues in the world. And then we're asking government to solve it, which is right. I mean, so when to me, these I arguments always better. these arguments when always often, break down there because, like, okay, when, but oh, go ahead, Pat. I was going to say the ultimate irony of that <clears throat> is that very often government has created the very conditions which stimulate the increased flow of quote unquote illegal class, undocumented slash, you know, border crossings. I mean, you know, if all you need to do is look at the narco terrorism that's rampant in Central America right now yeah. as a direct result of the war on drugs, and understand that we are, if we pre- if we presume to be border uh, control freaks, we're actually our own worst enemy. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, I don't think it's necessarily logically inconsistent, just dumb, to say that uh, I want a libertarian society in my country, but I don't want immigration. I think that's a dumb, dumb position to have, because that will do, that will wreck your economy. But I don't, I, think, I don't that, think you can. I I think that's like saying, um, you know, I hate it when you do this. The minute you utter the phrase, I think that's like saying. Well, okay, so I I don't think you can. If if I have an apple and a banana on the table. Nothing I do changes that they're an apple and a banana. I think some things are contrary to other things. And look, and we're fine. I, I, I think this probably is one of those things where, like, we're I arguing. We're arguing a, a definition here time. that I don't think really matters that much because there might be like ten people that I would consider libertarians who are also kind of nationalist at the same time. So it's not like this is a big group of people that uh, are infiltrating the party. Like th- most of the people who are nationalists trying to get into the party aren't libertarians. They don't have enough. And I, look, we just joked about libertarian purity, but there's a point where you're just not close enough that I'm not going to call you a libertarian anymore. Right. Right. And right. but you see, when, what happens though is when you have this bastardized liberty Republican libertarian tag where folks self-identify as being libertarians when, you know, we look at that and we're not being that you're not libertarian enough. We're just looking at it and saying, you're insane. Uh, you know, if, your if you, you know, is correct, sir. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, the, the, the notion that, yes, I support Trump's tariffs. Yes, I support a border wall. Yes, I support the repression of, 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 of sex workers. Um, yes, as a result, I believe in, in more the, the, in heightening the state's ability to confiscate private property. Yet I'm, I'm, liberta- I'm libertarian leaning. Oh. It's that whole leaning word that is that makes me insane because. You have this this new crop of young nationalist Trumpers supporting this regime who consider themselves libertarian because it's kind of hip to be libertarian when they don't have a functional understanding of what libertarian means, even in the broadest sense. I'm not so, trying to. I'm sorry, go ahead. Do, do you really? Because when I hear libertarian leaning, I hear. Um, I'm not even remotely libertarian, but I'm going to lean on your principles when I think it might politically benefit me. 
I don't believe them. They don't mean anything to me, but it'll get me a few more votes in this district. So I'm going to lean. That's what I think. I mean, do you guys not feel that way? Like the, For the most, I think that's, that's off. That is true. At least as often as it isn't at least probably more. Yeah. There's an entire crop of candidates out there. Uh, yeah. Was it, if you look at the political makeup of DC now, you, the, single biggest change, say, since my generation and the current young generation is that there is a career path now right out of college for people to make a living engaging in politics. You know, it could be at a think tank. It could be at a research facility. It could be at a polling group. It could be at the party itself. That didn't exist in the 80s and 90s, nowhere near to the degree it does now. A lot of those folks are, are either hardcore one party or the other. And yet at the same time, when it suits them, they will co-opt the terminology because, again, you can do one of two things. If you're a Republican and say you're liberty-leaning, you can attract potentially some libertarians. Conversely, that also allows you, if you want to invade the movement, all right, to, to try and co-opt it for your own personal political gain, that makes it a lot easier. We allow that to happen. We need to stop allowing that to happen. Agreed. If that makes people uncomfortable, where we actually discuss, you know, really important libertarian principles like immigration, like corporate cronyism, you know, like the war on drugs. Oh, well, it's not a bad thing to say that we're libertarian and that we actually have beliefs. That doesn't make us arrogant or elitist about our libertarianism. It's just simply calling the herd and saying, OK, we're going to involve you at the higher level. We're going to ask ask you to be a candidate. We're not going to we're not going to just stumble and fall for the first Republican who comes along and decides that yeah I'm, I'm kind of libertarian leaning. I, I I support people's right to use guns because I hunted as a child on Long Island. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Dude, we have done this so many times. I lived through Bar Root, so fuck y'all. <laughs> that was some shit. All right. Listen, Rhode Island was Rhode Island in, in one of the proudest moments of whatever you want to call my political involvement. Always remember, Rhode Island was the state that threw Bill Weld out. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that was the three candidates who are running for General Assembly in Rhode Island, as well as a strong group of people who run the executive committee, who reached up as one and said, no mas, go home. Justin's right. Justin's right. Can you read that comment, Pat? I agree, Justin. Absolutely. I'm reading. I, I, I just read Eddie's comment. Which I don't see a comment from Justin. It was on the bottom of the screen. Um, it said. Are you talking about the Nations right, and Borders one? Yeah, yeah, and Eddie's right too. Nations and Borders. Uh, na nations need borders. People have no need for nations. Free people and free markets thrive best in the absence of the state. Absolutely. Yep. And Eddie's comment was correct also. Absolutely. About the, the Democrats. The Democrats and the Republicans. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I typically do a better Democrats job. Today always, today I got really like them. So I, I, I do want to make a quick apology to our listeners because I have been really low energy for this podcast. I came home and my dog had chewed my cord for the computer. I am running off a of Wi-Fi right now and I'm scared. Although, strangely, it's actually holding a better connection. I think there might have been a problem with my cord to begin with, and maybe I need to look into that. But, um, yeah, let's uh, – uh, in my state, half the Republicans start the term expecting to spend every dollar that comes in. Um, Max, what's your registration, though? Didn't Okay, didn't he switch, like – can I don't we, know. That's why I'm asking. I feel look, and I get look. I I, I did I cut that video for Justin, but I do want to say I like to give people a chance. Like, well, and I heard that Max did switch or had before. I don't know. Can so I don't know even know what state that is. Can can he switch? Is libertarian an option? And that's Pat. You would know, probably, right? Probably not. Actually, he's right. Probably not. It wasn't an option here for 16 years. We had really good libertarian um, men and women who ultimately ran as Republicans because they didn't have a choice. 
And, and at the end of the day, policy is more important. Getting that policy through that is libertarian policy is more important. Okay. And in many, many, many states, in many states, when we say you can't register to vote as a libertarian, you can't run as a libertarian, what we mean is it is against the law. It's illegal for you to run as a libertarian, register as a libertarian, or vote for libertarian candidates. That's what we are literally saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Someone just shared a butt pic to me, so I had to stop for a moment. I'm a simple man. <laughs> Leave me alone. Always it's been take a rough priority. Uh, so, man, today's really sucked, and I, I really feel sorry that I brought such low energy here. But I, So I want to kind of bring us back, though, because I'm kind of coming back now. Uh, you want, um, you're exploring being the alternate for region eight. I know Justin was kind of teasing earlier about, uh, are you planning on running for his spot when he, uh, when the next cycle comes in and he's not running for it? Uh, is that something well, on I your mean, radar? For, well, it, first off, I mean, you know, I don't want to sound like your typical politician. I have to make sure that, you know, I've got the support of the people in region eight, mm -hmm. you know, and there are some talented people in region eight and. You know, and, and I'm There's reaching like out three to them. at most, really. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there really are some good people. It's a good region. Yeah, I mean, when you when you look at some of the things that have been accomplished, I mean, region, region seven's better though. Well, region eight has got one challenge that a lot of the country doesn't, and that is we are the bluest part of the bluest part of the nation, bar none. Rhode Island, states like Rhode Island, Vermont, New Massachusetts, uh, even now, even now, New Hampshire is, is starting to swing blue. I mean, the challenge of being a libertarian when you're right in the heart of socialist workers paradise, I, I, I can't even begin to explain to folks because you're talking about a significant part of the population is, has just either draws financial support, whether they're employed by financially supported by the government. We reached a tipping point in Rhode Island where the majority of the people in the state of Rhode Island derive some form of income from the government. How do you challenge the, the, how do you challenge corporate cronyism, a hundred million dollar subsidy for a baseball stadium, when folks just simply say that's how things are done? Well, I so, mean, the same way you challenge theocracy in a seventy thirty Republican supermajority. Right. So it's it, it, it the people in, in 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 New England, it's it's an uphill battle all the way, and to the candidates who run repeatedly in the face of insurmountable odds. I give them all the credit in the world because, you know, you, 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 you walk around a state and there are cases where you get the doors slammed in your face because you simply mention the word libertarian. Yep. So I know that's it, it, I know we're fighting an uphill battle everywhere, but the people in Region 8, you know, there's some strong traditions there. And obviously, New Hampshire is one of them. Uh, so, you know, I, again, I, I love the party. I love the philosophy. You know, I, I try to live it in the best way I can, and I try to either use my my my, my little show um, and my efforts to create a feeling of positivity. And I've learned that from a couple of people in the organization. No matter how cynical people can get online, we have great reason to be excited about our future. Yep. And I, I want to be part of that at some level. And so, you know, I'm, I'm reaching out to people and seeing, you know, if, if I can get involved in this level, you know, and, and, and Justin is still very much the, the region rep. So, you know, this is a, you know, a supporting role. I would support, a coup, I would support a coup d'etat against Justin. I, I mean, I probably would too. I love you, Justin, but still. Um, <laughs> so we need a good coup in this party. You, I'm going to ask you two questions that when I ran for my alternate seat that I was asked, um, uh, and one of them is, can you attend meetings? Yes, uh, the, the, that, that's something I couldn't have done a year ago. Um, moving now that my children are out of college and I'm moving into a uh, <laughs> through fits and starts into a more financially stable world. Yeah, you know, well, that's the a miracle freaking fire miles. Can you work as a team with Justin? Yeah, I've always enjoyed it. I, Justin and I came into the movement at a similar time. I've always enjoyed working with him. I mean, I love Justin, but I don't know if I could work with Justin all the time. I no issues there whatsoever. And again, I you know the alternate is the you know the assistant, the supporting character. You know what do they say in the Miss America uh, contest? And you're the first runner up in the in the 
in the uh, in, in the likely or unlikely event that the Miss America is unable to fulfill her duties because she has, you know, engaged in some type of <laughs> adult behavior. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, mean, you, I guess that's, that's up to each region how they kind of do that. I'm really fortunate that I'm in a region where my rep expects contribution, um, and she expects me to work. Uh, that's what I what I agreed to when I ran. That's what I stepped into. That's because you um, have the best rep. Sorry, sorry, John. <laughs> I, Whitney's amazing. Um, she just is. Yeah, no, and and I've been learning a lot just being the. The sort of the, the quiet man in the, uh, you know, LSLA and the uh, affiliate support committee about how things run at the uh, at the national level. Um, you know, it's been a real education, you know, for, you know, being in a room full of folks who have been who've operated at a very high level for a number of years. And Aaron, you're one of them. I mean, and, and John Phillips and, you know, and, and Dave Demmer, Dave Demmer is super. I mean, you know, there's, there's some great people in these groups. And who have operated at a very high level for a long time, and uh, it's it's I learned a lot already from them, and and I think that's you know, but but at the same token, you know, as, as an organization, the organization or the cause I should say, the philosophy, is always bigger than one individual. So whereas you you, you know you try and project some type of path, quite frankly, you know this the next superstar that comes in could be so good that you you, you need to always look to what's good for the organization mm -hmm. in terms of your own, your own personal goals. So, you know, I, 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 I'd love to get involved with this at a higher level. There's, you know, it's, it's easy to, when it comes to the LNC, it's awfully easy for people to sit on the sidelines and bitch and moan. It's awfully easy to do that when they've got no real skin in the game and the, you know, chat rooms and Facebook and everywhere <laughs> are filled with people bitching <laughs> and moaning who, you know, who haven't sat, for days at a time working at a convention location who haven't had to deal with some of the personality issues that we faced in the LNC in the last year, year or two, you know, it just, it, it's just easy to criticize. And, and, and remember always that the people involved at the high level of the party are volunteers. None of us are ever going to make money off of this. I, <laughs> you know, I have anything to say about it. We aren't. Yeah. So it's it's just it's a recognition that when you talk about future plans, the needs of the organization always have to come first. Look, I want to talk about that. I know there's been so much discussion about paying LNC members and paying a chair and paying a chair to do a job. That's how you get cronyism, people. It's how that shit happens. Listen, I mean. The needs are so great and the resources are so few that I think any conversation of compensation, unless, of course, it's for a staff member, you know, or a, a oh, yeah, staff is always different. Right. We should absolutely right. have staff. Right. But, you know, if you're looking at the hierarchy of your organization politically, you know, we're a long way from being able to afford anything like that at all. How about some, you know, media buys and things like that first before we get to the point where we're talking about, you know, compensating individuals. And, and if you care about the work, who care about the movement, not who care about the paycheck. I'm going to tell you, I work in, I work in healthcare and um, we're going around in a group and being asked why we want to do this work. And one person in the group says, this is the best paying job in town. I don't want to work with that person. Yeah, you, 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 you're, you're, you're talking about whether it's political work, whether it's healthcare work, teaching, you're talking about avocations, not hardcore careers. You do it because you love the work. And if you hope to be compensated fairly and you hope to be compensated in a way that you, you can live a full life. But ultimately, if you're looking for a paycheck from the, from the Libertarian Party, <laughs> I don't see that happening. Any we hear so many, um, so many detractors, and so many of the LNC sucks. And um, you know what? I I was that person. I thought the LNC sucked and needed some some big changes. So I ran for the fucking seat, and I did the work, and I got the seat because I had already worked myself into the seat. You have to do the work. If you don't care about the work, you're going to be miserable up there. 
Yeah, because, uh, you know, folks, I think, outside of the LNC have a tendency to think that it's kind of like the Star Wars Senate. You, you, you get together as a group in this big room and, you know, you, 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 you wear your, your uh, wear something fancy and you, you, you get to have some shrimp cocktail and a couple of cotton drinks. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of grinded out work. And, and again, that's what I've seen firsthand watching you guys this year. Um, and just in a variety of different activities, it's it's a grinded out kind of existence where, quite frankly, it's more guts and glory, and the the workaday stuff can consume you. It just is. So yeah, that's that's what, that's what happens when you run a, try to run a political movement. I have a a quick beef I want to throw out here, and then I think we kind of need to go because these podcasts get past an hour, and then I can't download them very well. <laughs> Um, my, my big thing here is we, we keep talking about, um, the LNC and a lot of the things that the LNC does is in subcommittee. And what always bugs me is those subcommittees are LNC members, like ma- a majority or all of those spots are LNC members. No. And, and then they'll take on some people from outside of the LNC, but one, I feel like. They, they don't always select and, and maybe it's because you know the people who are actually good at some of these things don't apply for it but That's I feel like there's a lot of favoritism that goes on selecting those spots and the people who are put in charge of it because they're on the LNC and not um, because the people who are put in charge of it are the, the LNC members and most of the time uh Maybe not most of the time, but the times I've really paid attention, it seems like that person is not equipped to be chairing a board that's dealing with that issue. I've only actually seen the chair be not equipped a couple of times. Um, chairs are are sometimes appointed by our chair, sometimes elected by their committee. So it's it, it's up and down, number one. Number two, you do have to apply. When I applied for the Convention Oversight Committee, I had to send in a resume. Yeah, so I all I, I, application process. I, I was initially going to apply for the social media, not social media, but like there was a committee that was going to look into social media. And I was like, huh, maybe I'll apply for that. And then they asked for a resume. It's like, it's social media, guys. Yeah, well. My please, resume is okay. on the internet. Go look at it. They don't have time to do that. These are volunteers. Uh, you buy need that. To sell yourself for this position, just like you would for any other job that you want. Because make no mistake, it but, is a job. But not every. But when I have seen social media jobs posted in the real world, it's not send us your resume. It's send us the Facebook pages and Twitter pages that you've run. I would have done that. I would have said, "Here's my resume. Here are links to all of the things that I've done." Nothing precludes you from including those things in your resume. Mine had a video. Can I bring up a uh, something we talked about going into the show? Speaking no, of committee, I'm just kidding. Go speaking ahead. Of some, <laughs> speaking of something that I'm involved in and responsible for trying to accomplish against all odds. I, I, I am no. I'm a civil libertarian at heart. I am no fan of collecting databases, but there's two databases we are trying to create. And I think, it, and one can say is almost a cross effort between the LSLA, which is the Libertarian State Leadership Alliance, which is a freestanding organization, and the Affiliate Support Committee, which is a committee of the LNC, which is populated by members of the LNC and also members of the LSLA. Mm-hmm. So you've got these two groups there, which are, I think, are, I, Aaron, I think it's fair to say are working cooperatively. Because there's so much, so much cross pollination, if you will, between the two groups. There's two areas of, of that I'm going to request people, and I've, I've sent out, I've used, I've sent out social media, I've sent out emails, and it's I'm having a heck of a time. That I'm going to request people reach out to me. Now, first of all, I'm Pat Ford on Facebook. You can see if you see the letters "No" in a baseball stadium behind it. That's a, uh, a vestige from a, something we've been involved in in Rhode Island. That's me on Facebook. So please, f- please friend me on Facebook. I'm looking to continue to build a database of affiliates, not just the state affiliates, but county, municipal, I don't care. If you're a recognized affiliate by your state party, we want to be in touch with you. 
Now, first off, we're not going to share that information with anybody. We're not going to spam you, but we want to be engaged. There's two sets of programs that we're engaging in, in, in beginning this year. Number one, there's something called the LP Everywhere uh, contest, for lack of a better, passive marketing, where we're asking people in the affiliates to take pictures and document some air, some active out, uh, outreach. And there's a contest. There's a cash prize, $1,000 of money raised by Aaron, all right, uh, from donors to give to the affiliate that's got the most outstanding effort. So there's money involved. But we also are going to be involved in efforts to uh, do leadership training and to create this, this effectively try the beginning, and, you know, baby steps here. But in the very beginning, we've got this vast institutional knowledge of people that leaves when that person either sometimes sadly gets burnt out or moves on to other things. Life changes, you know, pull them out of party activities. <clears throat> and we want to share that with people. We want to create activities which are going to build value for the affiliates. Because one of the biggest beefs that folks that I know had with the LNC was was that you, there's this sort of gulf, if you will, between affiliates and the LNC. We're looking to bridge that. So if you're involved in affiliate, please reach out to me. It's either pford at lpri.us or Pat Ford on Facebook. Um, or my Twitter, my personal Twitter handle is PO Taxpayer, P, the letter P, the letter O Taxpayer. And just send me a list of contact information so that we can build this database so we can reach out to people. Now, we had thousands, tens of thousands of views on this great video that Aaron and Joshua uh, it really did yeoman's work on pulling together. And yet there are still people who I'm running into who haven't heard about this contest. So we need you to send us that information so we can present opportunities for growth in the movement for you. The second, another database here, folks, rightfully after the 2016 election where we got some media from the mainstream media, if you will, more so than I, I'm told than ever before, we're going to find ourselves in 2020 fighting for airtime again. We have, and this show is a perfect example, this incredible array of podcasts, streaming television shows, what, however you want to define it in the new media. It is our strength. We need to support each other's efforts. We need to promote each other's shows. I have people now from on my show who, rep, who are from other blogs, other organizations, other streaming television. I have no problem promoting their work. It's what, you know, it, this is, you know, we're not, we shouldn't be even think of being in competition with each other. We need to amplify each other's work so that we can grow our own media movement so that we are not reliant on the mainstream media. We're not reliant, you know, I, uh, on, on folks who might be too lazy to reach out or just unaware of what we're doing. So what we found in Rhode Island is a group called Liberty RI, which is, which is run by John and Mike and a couple of hardcore libertarians. I do my coalition thing, which is a hybrid libertarian slash political show. There, there's efforts like that going on all around the country. So that in 2020, when we have candidates who are running for hyper-local offices or the presidency of the United States, that we take advantage of the collective power of those organizations so that we can amplify our signal. Because the beauty of, of earned media is that it's free. And we are in a state, a place in time where it should be ideal for a third party organization like ourselves to take advantage of that to get our message out to the people. That may be the only way we can afford to do it this election cycle. So you want I, podcasters, bloggers, social anything. media influencers, guys, send Pat your info. He's trying to build a network. Help him out. Right. I, Right. And I want I listen, my first goal in this is simply to make more people aware of what you're doing. Yeah, I, 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 that's the goal so that you get more clicks and you get more views and you get more people dialing in. That's the goal. Let people in individual communities around the country know that there's an alternative for news. There's an alternative perspective out there that can be gained by simply watching a local show or maybe even a show around the country that's a, as far away as, as a Facebook chat room. You know, it, it's we've got some wonderful efforts out there, and it, it's time for us all as a team to amplify those. So I'm, I'm begging. I, you know, listen, uh, you know, I'm not about begging. 
right. So Send yeah, me your information. So we can't find Pat. Reach out to me. I'll help you get in touch. I know we're getting ready to go, but really quick. Zach, shout out to the Libertarian Party of Nebraska, man. 15,000 registered voters. That's a big damn deal. Good job, guys. And, uh, and I want to, if I could tease something, the Libertarian Party of New Mexico, I'm just going to tease this, is engaging in an outreach effort that I think is going to be, I'll just put it out there. Go to their page, check it out. It's, it's, it's starting to filter through an outreach effort that might be hard to beat. So folks need to step up their outreach effort if they want to be part of this LP, get, get a chance at the big prize with the LP everywhere. All right. So we're hitting 60 minutes. Uh, thank you, Pat Ford, for coming on. Thanks, Pat. Uh, Thanks for having me. Thanks for I'm, having me. I really I'm sorry it. for my low energy tonight. You can blame my dog for eating my internet. Um, congratulations to Nebraska. We'll see you all on Tuesday. Who's Tuesday? Murray Sabrin's on Tuesday. That'll be yes. fun. Murray Sabrin. Yeah, be good. that'll be great. So, we'll see something about the Fed sucking or something like that. I just yeah. got the book. I yeah. already started. It's a must read. All right. We'll see you all later. Bye.